the ace, a powerful position to hold, and a title that means much more than just the best player. An ace is someone who is a symbol, a symbol of confidence, power, and skill. Throughout Haikyuu, we've met many of these aces, each with their own stories. We have monsters like Ushiwaka, Hoshiyumi, and Kiryu that each embody the role of the ace quite well, even if they do that in their own unique ways. Some of them didn't even harbor all the qualities of an ace, each of them honing in on the few that worked for them. Kiryu wasn't particularly confident, but his power was unmatched. Iwaizumi wasn't the most powerful, but his leadership took him far. However different they are though, there is one quality, perhaps the most important, that all the aces share. Reliability. An ace is someone who is always there to score when no one else can. Someone who brings hope and stands as a pillar that everyone can lean on. The aura they give off, the intensity with which they play, and the consistency with which they perform are all indicative of how reliable these guys are. When the going gets tough, the aces are always there for their team. All of the top aces that we came across seemed to have this quality in them from the moment they were introduced. Except for one guy. One guy who, although brimmed with confidence, exploded with power, and honed his skills to the best, was not the most dependable. Hell, at times it felt like he was the least dependable person on his team. I always thought of him as someone who could be easily exploited by his opponents, and someone who, although very gifted, seemed highly unstable. And I couldn't have been more wrong in my life. This video is about an ace who learns to become dependable. An ace who I honestly thought was a gag character, but somehow moved me in a way I had never expected. Enter Kotaro Bokuto, the shining star of Fukuro Dani, and the ace that ended up being the most reliable of them all. When we're first introduced to Bokuto, it's during the Tokyo training camp between Karasuno and four other teams, including Fukuro Dani and Nekoma. Here we learn that Bokuto is actually one of the top five aces in the nation, which is pretty impressive but not surprising considering his personality and his amazing skills, particularly that cut shot which Tanaka is inspired by. He's the type of guy who gets excited over insane games, on the same level as Hinata honestly and is one of those volleyball idiots that treat the game as if it was their own life. However, there are two things about Bokuto that stand out from the rest. One positive and one not so positive. The first is his influence on the court. As I mentioned, Bokuto is hella passionate about volleyball, and he isn't afraid to voice that passion. He, unlike many others, actually wants to stand out. He wants everyone's attention to be on him. He always looks like he's having fun and as a byproduct exudes this energy that you can't help but cheer on. Whether it be friend or foe, his passion, his drive to score, and his intensity gets carried over to all the other players, including those that are just watching. Being on the same court as Bokuto makes everyone want to reciprocate his energy. It's a quality that honestly not many players in the series have. Dare I say, no one influences others on the court as intensely as Bokuto except maybe Hinata. The second thing, however, isn't the most productive. Whenever he goes through a series of bad plays or misses a couple shots and basically seems like he's not having the greatest of games, he kind of gets depressed and just shuts down. This is where Fukuro Dani as a team shines though, because they know how to deal with Bokuto's phases and don't depend on him completely. Particularly their setter, Akashi, is quite accustomed to Bokuto's mood swings and has every possibility in his mind for what needs to be done. They function just fine without him, which is probably why they made it to nationals, and they're known as the team that carries the ace, when usually it's the other way around. Bokuto is basically the little brother of the team and had to be taken care of. Yet to me, this seemed like a major setback to Bokuto's title of ace. This tendency of his came off as unreliable since the ace is supposed to step up when things get rough. He's supposed to be the one that rallies the team when they do bad, not sulk at his failures. But at the end of the day, I thought it was a cool way to introduce the team dynamic as a whole, even if it left Bokuto feeling like a double-edged sword. And so, how does Bokuto make it so far into nationals? 
To get to that, we have to first understand who is Kotaro Bokuto. Although some might interpret him to be a loud, arrogant player, he's actually just enthusiastic and honestly selfish in a good way. He truly wants to be the best while also having the most fun. One key feature that people don't realize is that Bokuto is not an idiot. He doesn't simply just smash the ball down without thinking. Hell, he was the one that taught Hinata the beauty of tipping the ball, a technique that is quite the opposite of a spike. When growing up, he was never afraid to show his passion, but it was rare that people around him matched that energy. It was simply too much for some people to catch up to, and so he was kind of left alone there. His philosophy though, which I absolutely love, is what keeps him going, what fuels him. A philosophy he learned in his junior league days. Do what's fun, not what's easy. On the surface, that might sound like, oh, just have fun no matter what, even if things get tough. However, it's more like saying that if you want to have the most fun on the court, sometimes you're gonna have to take the harder routes. Although simply smashing the ball is fun, if you keep doing only that and play against stronger and stronger opponents, you'll soon hit a wall and the fun will stop. And so Bokuto's idea of fun is not brain dead spiking, it's getting around the block and scoring no matter what. And to get there, he has to be good at the quote unquote boring stuff like digging, blocking, tipping, positioning, and so on. All of this just so that he can remain on the court. Another philosophy, or in this case a code, that Bokuto believes in is what he calls the way of the ace. A set of rules that all aces should follow to even be considered an ace. The rules go as follows. Number one, your back should be an inspiration to your teammates. Number two, smash every ball in your way. Number three, every ball shall be spiked. However, even with all these rules and codes, the fact of the matter is that Bokuto was unreliable because of his mood swings. And so we enter Nationals, where we watch Fukuro Dani's first match, where things seem to be going even worse than usual. The first set has barely begun and there's already something off. Bokuto's mood swings have already kicked in. Akashi, who usually expects when these mood swings will happen, is also surprised because he doesn't understand the cause of this sudden change. We then find out that Bokuto is sad, and I'm not even making this up, because they're playing in the sub arena, which only has one court and therefore less people, as opposed to the main arena, which has four courts. The rest of the team tries to cheer him on, but clearly he was really down in the dumps. Already when watching, this was a major red flag for me. If something as trivial as this could cause Bokuto to break, what could something more devastating do to him? And so, nevertheless, the match continues and Fukurodani seems to be lagging behind, though not too badly, and Bokuto is still not feeling it. So Akashi, the ever-reliable setter, finally comes up with an explanation that actually brings Bokuto back. He says that since there's only one court in the sub arena, everyone's eyes are on Bokuto. Everyone is watching him. On top of that, Akashi points out someone particular in the stadium who's watching him, his student, Hinata, who's holding up a Way of the Ace shirt. Understanding that he can no longer sulk, Bokuto gets fired up as the animation goes crazy and the music picks up. He then proceeds to hit the sharpest line shot I've ever seen while facing three blockers. I have to admit, it was a pretty awesome scene and Fukurodani ends up winning the game, but the fact remained that Bokuto was still a loose cannon. And then came a scene after this match and after Karasuno's match against Inarizaki, it was a scene I hadn't expected, not in a million years, and something about it spoke to me. Outside his hotel as snow falls slowly, we see Bokuto and Akashi kind of just talking about what's to come. Bokuto says that he's really going to miss playing with Akashi and the rest of Fukurodani, since this is his last high school tournament. This is a little odd, coming from the guy who's always goofing off or sulking, we've never really seen this side of him. Akashi tells him that there's still a long way to go, quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. Then we get a little scene that sent chills down my spine. Hmm. 
全部勝つ I don't know what it was about this particular moment, but something changed. This was the first time I saw Bokuto this serious, and it was almost like when Hinata gets that intimidating look in his eyes. It was a look that seemed to be telling me, don't you dare underestimate me. And so, the next day, after Karasuno and Nekoma wrap up their insane game, we get to see Fukuro Dani's match against Muji Nazaka, a battle between the nation's best aces, and a match that utterly and completely left me in awe. Honestly, when I found out that Bokuto would be facing off against one of the top three aces in the country, I immediately wrote it off as Fukuro Dani's loss. I thought it would be a close match, but I didn't expect Fukuro Dani to win, not even slightly. And the match does start out like that as we are introduced to Kiri Wakatsu, a guy who's on the same level as Ushiwaka and Sakusa, but has a completely different personality. Muji Nazaka takes the lead as their ace keeps scoring, showing us his ability to score from anywhere with almost all of his power. What's worse is that Akashi, who is usually the one that has everything under control, is actually having a hard time. His attacks are countered quite often, his dumps are easily read, and on top of that, Bokuto gets blocked again and again. Muji Nazaka has implemented what they call an anti-Bokuto strategy, where they completely shut out all of his attacks. They have their blockers positioned in a way where they can easily block his line shots, and they've got receivers ready in place for his cross shots. With that, they have all of Bokuto's strengths covered, and Akashi begins to overthink. He begins to panic. At this point, I expected Bokuto's shutdown to happen. I expected that his mood would go off the charts and he would come back a while later, but this time I thought it wouldn't be enough to get him the win, which seemed quite fitting. To me, Bokuto still had a lesson to learn, and what better way to learn it than taking a massive loss in his last tournament. We then get a flashback, telling us why Akashi joined Fukuro Dani. It was because, well, of Bokuto. Akashi had never seen a player play volleyball like Bokuto, someone so energetic, so passionate, and so good. Bokuto's influence spread even to those watching, and Akashi was inspired, causing him to join the team. And from then on, they became an awesome duo, each complementing one another quite well. As we cut back to the present, surprisingly, Bokuto's mood is still normal. As Kiryu smashes the ball in, Bokuto has an awesome moment where he saves the ball with his chest, his proud back facing his teammates. After that, during Akashi's panic, Bokuto destroys the ball and squeezes in a line shot through the block that scares the shit out of Muji Nazaka. And then soon after, in the very next play, even though Muji Nazaka had blockers up and even a defender ready for his cut shot, he still does the cut shot, which is so damn sharp, the receiver doesn't even touch it. And then came a panel that shook me. A panel that shook everyone at Fukuro Dani. Bokuto looks at his team and tells them that for the last three years, he was the team's ace because of them, because of his teammates. They always cheered him on, fixed his moods, and created an environment that would allow him to keep being the ace. Without them, Bokuto couldn't have been as good as he was. But now, he says, as he will soon have to say goodbye to them in just a few days, it was about time he became the team's ace using his own power. What struck me about this moment is what Bokuto must have been thinking up until this point. I think back then, outside the hotel, Bokuto realized that after high school, he's still gonna keep playing, but what were the odds that he was going to get such understanding teammates then? Could he always go forward being the way he was? Obviously, the answer he came to was no. At this moment, when he says he's gonna win them all, he wasn't just referring to the tournament, but every single moment that he would continue playing volleyball. And so, Fukuro Dani start catching up the points, but still end up losing the first set just barely. 
as Bokuto continues, the crowd starts cheering him on, since his amazing energy is rubbing off on everyone that's involved in the match, which hypes Bokuto up even more. As the crowd shouts his name, Bokuto spikes ball after ball, ace after ace, and Fukuro Dani takes back the second set. The fans go wild, the opponents are pressured, and Bokuto is doing better than ever. His energy even rubs off on Kiryu. Bokuto's vibes combined with Kiryu's teammate's pep talk gets Kiryu pumped up as well, and the third set rages on. Even this late in the game, Bokuto is clear-headed, watching, thinking, and making really smart plays, not just brute force attacks. We understand even better his philosophy of do what's fun, not what's easy. He doesn't mind training himself in all these so-called boring types of attacks because he knows that at the end of the day, it will make him a better player, resulting in him having more fun. Finally, Bokuto is doing so damn well that he even hypes up Akashi, his calm setter who never risks trying new things, into trying out a back attack quick for the first time, never having it practiced it before. Just like that, two points later, Fukuro Dani hit one last smash and take the win, heading on to the semifinals. A win that would have been quite impossible if Bokuto would have lost his edge at any point in that match. It was too close and too intense for him to have just messed up his mood there. And so, in just one match, Bokuto goes from being a loose cannon, a double-edged sword, and a moody guy, someone who is so close to tapping into his full potential but always fell short, to being one of the most reliable aces in Haikyuu. It was a journey truly fitting of a man who follows the way of the ace. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and liking the video and all that jazz. Let me know what other aces you'd like me to talk about. I'm definitely planning on it. Other than that, I guess I'll see you on the next one.